Hello and welcome to the Love Mondays Club podcast. I'm your host Helen and I'm here to help you unravel the mysteries of marketing so that you can get more eyes on your business and make more sales. This is the ultimate podcast for online female business owners who are ready to conquer their overwhelm, discover their confidence and unlock the secrets to marketing success. Whether you're just starting out or already running a thriving business, Love Mondays Club is your compass to navigate this ever-changing digital world. Each episode, I'll bring you valuable insights, expert interviews, and practical strategies to help you stand out in a crowded online marketplace. It's time for you to dream big and succeed. I want your Mondays to be overflowing with inspiration, excitement, and setting the stage for you achieving your dreams. So if you're ready, cozy up in your favorite spot and get ready to unlock your business potential let's dive in hello and welcome to another episode of love mondays club today i want to talk to you about something that i think is a really invaluable part of your marketing strategy so When I work with my clients, there's kind of two things that we mainly focus on. One of them is creating essentially like a sort of funnel or a route or a path that your clients can kind of go through, taking them from discovering you all the way through to buying your services or wanting to work with you. Now, one of the kind of core principles of that is the idea of email marketing. I love email marketing. I think it's so powerful and so effective. And it's something I really enjoy helping my clients to set up and kind of use effectively in their business. Interesting little sort of a caveat side note here. One person who recently joined Love Mondays Club, she was talking to me about how like social media, she just finds it quite difficult. She finds engagement on there quite hard. The nature of her job and what she does means actually that people don't want to be overly open about, you know, the problems that they're facing and things like that. And that's why they go to her privately. So we started exploring email marketing and started using it in her business and literally with Within a few weeks, she's already started making sales from it. So it's amazing, like the quick return on investment people can see from it. I've kind of teased you with that. And really annoyingly, that isn't actually what I want to talk to you about in today's episode. (laughs) But I did, however, when I was planning today's episode, think I haven't actually done a full on episode owed to email marketing. So I promise you that is coming. But today, what I want to talk about is community, because this is the kind of second part or second arm of like the marketing side that I really help my clients with. So I talk about all the way from, you know, how to start a community, how to build it, how to grow it, how to nurture it, but also really importantly, how to make sales from it as well. So that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. I'm going to talk to you about the kind of five, I guess, most effective ways for you to start growing an online community. Now, just to backtrack slightly here, what I mean by an online community is essentially like your audience. It's the people who are following you, interacting with you, sort of engaging with you, ultimately interested in what you're doing and want to know more. Now, when it comes to communities, you can essentially grow these on any social media platform. But one thing I would say is that some social media platforms are a bit more geared up for it than others. So as an example for you, Facebook groups, like I talk quite a lot about them for communities because, you know, they are very much geared up towards encouraging us to join groups and things like that. And I don't know about you, but for me, I know, especially if I look through my newsfeed now, a lot of the majority of what I see in the content that it feeds to me is stuff from groups, maybe stuff from people's personal profiles, but rarely is it things from like pages or, you know, business profiles and things like that. So that right there, creating those private communities on Facebook is really helpful and effective. And I would say that the vast majority of my clients I work with, that is the place where we build a community. However, the important thing to know is that Facebook's not for everybody. Potentially your ideal clients aren't on Facebook. So we can look as well at how things like Instagram or LinkedIn, TikTok, all these other different platforms, how we can create communities on there. But ultimately, wherever you're building it, the idea is that this is a group of people that like we want to really get to know them. We want to really nurture them because these people are potentially going to be turning into our paying clients in in the future. So it's really important that we build up good relationships with them. I'm going to talk to you today, not necessarily about how to kind of get people in your community. I'm just going to go slightly further than that and talk about like how to make the community like really valuable. And and that in itself as well, to be honest with you, is going to help it to grow because people are going to recommend it and there's going to be lots of engagement in there, which is one of the biggest things. And that's going to also help the social media algorithms to kind of see, for example, your Facebook group, if lots of people are engaging in there, it'll promote it out to other people or they'll be able to find it easier. So 
let's dive into the kind of five things that are really going to help your community to thrive and grow. So number one is providing really valuable content in there. Now, I could probably do an entire episode on this in terms of what that content should be. The one thing I will say is it's all about striking a very interesting balance between giving away information that's really beneficial, really helpful, the kind of things that people think, oh my goodness, I wish someone had told me this sooner, but also not giving away all of your services and the kitchen sink to the point that people kind of see you as a free resource and then feel like they don't need, you know, to buy your services because they've got everything that they need. So a few like different examples of what you could do. So something I did in my community group the other day is I watched this video it was like a TED talk it was really interesting and I thought this is something I bet lots of people in my community could relate to so that was an example of something I shared now I didn't just share it in a way that's like oh hey watch this video I think it's interesting I made sure I wrote a bit of a context to it like a little bit of a post so I put a bit of a personal share in there I said like why I think this is interesting what relevance it's got and then the most important thing and I'm going to talk about this a lot more in a moment is I put like a sort of call to action on there or a question right asked people to get actively involved in the discussion about it rather than just go watch this video basically move out of you know my community and go somewhere else also as well you know doing lives in there that's going to be really helpful because showing up and showing your face is one going to help people to get to know you really well but also it's a great place for you to kind of share like thoughts and feelings and observations and things like that which people really appreciate inside your your community and you could even do like little tutorials and things like that explaining things to people essentially what we're doing here is we're trying to give people that sort of value that makes them want to keep coming back because they know that every time they click on your community or go into it they're going to learn something or they're going to get something from it but we do also maybe want a little bit of a tease at the end of it so you know the idea is like you're giving them part one but they have to work for you for parts two to five or something like that. The second one, and this might sound really obvious, but it's amazing how how often maybe people don't do this, is to actually engage actively inside your communities. Now, I think this is a really interesting one because I think sometimes people can be almost a bit afraid to show up inside the community. You know, they, they're a bit, I don't want to use the word scared, but it's the idea of like, you know, being a bit intimidated about going in there and talking to people who seemingly they don't know and sort of, you know, how are people going to react? Like, what are the conversations going to be like? All these sorts of things. So, One thing I think that's really important is that if you're planning on setting up a community, you almost have to really lean into this role of like, you are the leader, like you are the person who's there, like everyone's following and they want to, you know, they they want to hear your thoughts and they're gonna, they're gonna sort of follow your example as you go. So there's got to be this idea that you're going in there and you're engaging, you're asking loads of questions. And that right there, I would say, is actually part of the silver bullet. There isn't really a silver bullet with these things, but it is definitely one thing that a lot of people miss is they don't ask enough questions in the community. They don't get the conversation going. Now, actually, at the time of this recording inside Love Mondays Club, we did a big training about this, which is kind of what got my my brain thinking about doing this podcast episode. And we literally went through and we talked about all the different types of questions you can ask inside your community. And then most importantly, like how to carry on those conversations. So sometimes it might be questions about you know pain points you know what are people in your community struggling with at the moment what would they like help with maybe it could be more on the kind of positive goal side so you know what are they hoping to achieve from x but the idea is that hopefully all the people in your community that comment on that and reply to that that's opening up little threads of discussion and rather than us just replying saying oh great or that's interesting we want to keep asking them questions and ultimately the aim is is that those questions then lead to you being able to offer your help. Now, that's not always going to be the case. Like some, sometimes people are, they've already got the support they need or they're not looking for it. And that's fine. But that's all part of running a community is that there's going to be some people who are there ready to buy. They want your help straight away. Others might just want to be engaging with you, but you never know in the future they might come back to you because they'll remember that kind of meaningful interaction that they had with you and your offer to help them. 
The next thing as well that can really help you in sort of growing your community is also promoting the idea of collaboration. So getting your community to kind of work together. So this is something for me inside Love Mondays Club as well, because this is the thing as well with communities. And again, whole other podcast episode here. But you can think about like, it's not just the community with like your free audience, but you can also think about how you nurture the community within your paying clients. But for me, it's really important that people feel like they get to know each other and they, you know, support each other. They share their wins, but they also share maybe the things that aren't going so well for them. And for me, especially within private communities, honestly, that is the biggest value you get from it is just that sense of like, oh, I'm not alone. I'm not the only one that finds this difficult or has maybe, you know, things haven't gone as well as I'd initially hoped. Because I think we get so much more support in those moments than, than necessarily just sitting there hearing about also all the wonderful wins that are going on because um, we see that a lot publicly on social media but it's what's behind the scenes is what we're all most interested in isn't it the idea is is like getting people to kind of collaborate with things share things so again like the kind of engagement posts you could be putting out there is saying you know are people let me give you an education example that I would have done in my um, education community so I would have said something like can you share your best or favorite website for free resources to help with in my case it'd be 11 plus preparation everyone is going to find that so helpful everyone's going to be curious to see where's everybody else getting their information from so something like that you could also do like little challenges and competitions and things like that so you know get people to this would be a great one to like grow the group as you could say you know get all your community to share the group invite their friends and then at the end maybe someone wins could be all sorts of things a great one could be that they win for example like a power hour session with you So then not only are you growing your group, but also potentially you're converting somebody into becoming a client of yours because they'll have experienced the kind of wonders of working with you and all the great things that you can offer. That's a really nice way of sort of bringing people together and not making it feel like you're just having loads of individual conversations with people. Also as well, thinking about sort of, so number four really to help you grow the community is also like utilizing social media. So I'm going to talk about this again from a kind of Facebook group point of view but think about like all the different ways that you can put content inside your community so one thing I always say is that like when you're first starting off your community is going to feel very quiet very small it's going to feel a little bit like wading through treacle maybe initially trying to get things going but what's on the other side like what sits on the other side of that is so worth it when when the ball does get rolling but again this is this whole thing going back to kind of point number two is like you showing up as the leader you showing you know showing up all the time leading by example with the engagement and things like that now if you find that maybe you know if I was starting off a brand new community today I wouldn't necessarily dive in there and start asking loads of open questions and hoping lots of people comment because people are a bit guarded with these things aren't they they don't necessarily like to start commenting and sharing their views and opinions straight away especially if they don't know the host that well so one thing that always gets great engagement is a poll because there's a sense of like anonymity to it you know you're just clicking on something and voting but remember though as the community leader um, and actually often as observers as well within groups we can click on the options and actually see who's voted on things so like what I would normally do is maybe do a little poll asking a few questions just getting a bit of like you know, getting a little bit of feedback from people about things. And then I I would just leave it as that, keep it nice and simple. Maybe I would do a live like a day or two afterwards and I would talk about, oh, you know, we did that poll in the group. This is what everybody said and just share some thoughts or opinions around it. But then as time goes by, I would then utilize the poll a little bit more. So I'd maybe do another poll asking another question with some options but the options would be quite open-ended. So that would then give me the opportunity to tag members in the comments saying like, you know, acknowledging them, thank you so much for voting. I really appreciate it. You know, can you tell me a bit more about it or asking them a direct question that, that links to the result that they clicked on. But can you see like what I'm trying to do is just like gradually, gently get people more and more involved in the community so that, you know, again, they're not just writing something randomly, they're replying to you. But it's just about slowly building up that rapport with people and ultimately building up a bit of trust as well as you go. And then as time goes by and as your community grows and builds, you'll just be able to post out simple questions 
and people will write small essays for you. And that's fantastic because you know you've got great relationships going then. And then when new people come and join your community, they'll see all of this interaction and it'll hopefully encourage them over time as well. Because again, everyone works on different timescales, but it'll hopefully encourage them to also start gradually getting involved. One more thing as well is the importance, especially when you're first starting your communities, of welcome posts. So what I used to do is rather than just, you know, let's let's say on average I'd have two or three people asking to join a day, maybe in the early stages, rather than just randomly adding those people in and doing, you know, almost a welcome post every day, like that would get a bit boring for the other members. So sometimes what I would do is I would almost let the requests build up for a couple of days so that there was maybe five, 10, 15, 20 people all coming in at the same time and then let them all in and then I would do a live video, literally, it, would be, it wouldn't just be a welcome one as well, because again, for the other members, that's going to be a bit boring. They're not going to want to keep watching welcome videos. So I would start the video with a welcome, but then within a minute or so, I would then lead into something that I wanted to talk about that week. Again, sharing like advice, thoughts, tips, opinions, all sorts of different things. And then at the end, I'd have another quick call to action saying, and don't forget, you know, if you are a new member, please comment below, please say hello maybe tell us a little bit about yourself share links to your social media whatever it might be however you want your community to engage but what you can do as well after that live video is then tag the names of all the new people that have joined so that they're going to directly see that and it's not you know especially on Facebook the at everybody sort of function within groups is everybody I speak to has different relationships with it you know some people love it they use it all the time like I'm part of groups where I swear I get tagged every day in something um, and then I know there are other groups where they don't use use it at all. I dabble here and there with it. I maybe use it once or twice a week at, at a maximum because I know that it can annoy people a bit as well. But however, the problem with at everybody is that it does, as an individual, as a person in that community, it does feel a little bit impersonal. So if we can, especially for the new members, if we can just give them that little individual tag, it's just going to help them to feel a little bit more welcomed and a little bit more special. And then hopefully also going to encourage them to like or engage in the post a bit more. So that's the thing. Think about all the different ways you can interact with people inside your community and mix it up, like put the variety in there and it's going to encourage people to keep coming back and find out what's going on. Finally, the last one, and I found this works really well, is make sure you treat your sort of private communities. Because again, the context here of these Facebook groups I've been talking about is a lot of them are like closed communities. You know, people have to request to join and things like that. So that's another wonderful thing. You get to pick and choose who's inside of there. So especially as well, if you're a bit nervous about going live, at least in your own group, you know who's there. Like you, you've, you've let them in the front door. So it's not like you're kind of just like broadcasting it to the whole of social social media. So it's a great place to kind of hone your live craft, <laughs> get used to showing up on camera. But another really good thing is to also think about offering your community exclusive benefits. So recently I created a free sort of ebook guide for people all about marketing and all the different ways that they can market their business. Now I sort of very strategically did this where I made sure after I've made it that my clients, so the people who I'm currently working with, they got first dibs. So they got sent it straight away. They didn't have have to wait for any of the bonus training like they got it delivered because of course that's one of the main benefits of being a client is that you're sort of first come first served but then after that I didn't then sort of scattergun it all over social media I then made sure that the people inside my community they were then the next people to get it now don't get me wrong it's not like there's a limited amount of these ebooks but the fact is that the people who are there inside my community who you know engage with me and talk to me like I value their time so much and I value their engagement. So I want to make sure that, you know, they're the kind of next or first people to see things. So they got, you know, the dibs on it. And then after that, I kind of advertised it in different places. Now that's just for a freebie. But of course, if, for example, you're also selling things, for example, if I'm doing like my next London event, which is going to be in November. So my clients have all, they already know about it. They've already booked tickets for it. Like they get first dibs of everything. Then once I've kind of, you know, found out from my members who's coming and not I'll be able to see how many tickets are left over and then again next it'll be my community um, and my email list because again as
as I said at the start of this this podcast, the two kind of go hand in hand together. And what I do also find is most people who are active in my Facebook group tend to also be quite active in my email list as well. So there's this kind of nice little marketing ecosystem that goes on between the two. So they'll be the ones who then get the kind of exclusive offers to sign up to the event and then after I've spoken to the community and advertised it a few times then I'll talk about it outside of there a little bit more publicly so just ultimately it's again like showing that value to the people in your audience and that they get they get the first dibs on things you know they they get the kind of exclusive offers and it makes them it makes them feel more special it makes them feel more valued I hope that you have found this episode interesting like I say I've talked a lot about Facebook groups here but you don't have to have a Facebook group to build a community. Like it could literally just be your followers on a social media platform. But again, like I sort of mentioned, an email list sits really well and complements this really well. Because like I say, what you find is people who are active on your social media tend to be quite active in your email. So if, for example, I had like going back to the exclusive offers thing. If, for example, I was actually more building my community on LinkedIn or on Instagram, I would still make sure that I was always encouraging people people onto my mailing list. So whilst I don't necessarily have a private platform there to kind of send out, um, let's say the ticket sales for people. Okay, yes, I could go through and direct message people. But in reality, depending on the size of your audience, that might not always be the most practical idea. So instead, what I would do is I would send out an email to my list and then maybe on, for example, LinkedIn or Instagram or something like that, I would just do a post saying, literally as it is on the tin, exclusive offer for X, Y, and Z event. If you're on my mailing list, make sure you go check your emails today. And again, that's like a little call to action as well for people who might not have seen it yet. So hopefully this kind of makes sense, like the different tiers and ways that that you can go through sort of building, yeah, building your community and building up that, that sort of rapport, good relationships with people. And ultimately, getting to the whole point of all of this, the reason we want to get to know people and build up these relationships is so that when it comes to sales, one, we're creating services for our community, like because we know them so well, we know what they need help with. But the other side of it as well is that it really does take away that icky feeling sometimes of sales. Like none of us like doing cold messaging. None of us feel like we're just trying to sell to the abyss, you know, like just randomly throwing things out on social media and hoping it sticks. But instead, when it's when you're offering these services to people inside your community, it doesn't really feel like sales. It more feels like you're just offering them the help and support that they need that you've probably curated for them. And again, you know, your audience is going to be much more receptive to it. They're going to have much more open conversations with you about it. And also, we don't get it perfect first time all the time. So actually, if, for example, we're putting an offer out there and we're maybe not making enough sales, we can kind of lean into our audiences and talk to them and say to them, what is it that's making you, you know, stopping you from buying this? And sometimes it can just be something really small, like maybe the day needs to change. I'm literally talking from experience here because when I was planning my next event, I accidentally suggested, I think, a day um, that was that was half term that was definitely not going to work. <laughs> but for me, I, I just hadn't thought about half term, if I'm super honest. So when I kind of put it out there and thought, oh, why is no one really interested? I spoke to the community and they said, oh, Helen, it's half term. Like, I really want to come, but it's just not going to be practical. So all I had to do was go and chat to the venue, changed it by two weeks. And then as soon as I did that, it made it so much more accessible for people. So, you know, if things aren't selling, it's not always bad news. It's not always because people don't want it. There might just be some other factors that you haven't considered and they'll be very happy to jump in and tell you about it. (laughs) Okay. So thank you so much for listening to today's episode. I hope you found it really helpful. I promise I will also do one soon on email marketing and a bit of an ode to that, um, just because it will really complement sort of everything we've talked about here today with communities. And I've talked today as well, a lot about this idea of like sort of engagement and like, like creating this good culture inside your community but I appreciate as well I'll definitely do an episode on how to actually start the community and get it going and get people in the door because that can sometimes feel like the biggest challenge all right thank you so much for listening and I look forward to sharing next week's episode with you very soon thank you for listening to another episode of the love mondays club podcast don't forget to review and subscribe or share this episode with one of your business friends have a great week and I'll see you next monday